Hi, and welcome to Congo Children's Corner. I'm Kim. And I'm Claudia. And of course, tonight we have special guests. We're Very so excited. special. Yes. That's it. So we're going to start off with my topic, right? Yes. Yeah. One of them, because you know I've got so yes. many. Yes, you do. So of course, my first thing was love. And no, not <laughs> love. And then you said peace. <laughs> But it brings love and peace. Yes, so. and happiness. And happiness, exactly. once we get it all together. So, <laughs> Angelise. Angelise Marrero. All right. Yes. Hi, Angelise. Hi, know. The Welcome to the show. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? I'm good. All right. Had a good so day. Tell us about what you came to talk to us about tonight. I came to talk about bullying and the bully project that I had okay. done, and I still do. So tell us, come on, give yeah, us some so, um, details. Yes. Details, baby. <laughs> okay, so in September of 2013, there was a video um, I seen. It was three, actually, of a mentally challenged man. His name was Karan. I didn't know him or nothing. I'd seen a video. And, like, it was teens bullying him, and they were, like, hitting him and beat. They was basically beating him, but they didn't care. Like, they just, they were just, they were just beating him, but then they thought it was funny. Okay. So there was three different videos though of it, and like it made me mad because when I was about like eight or nine years old, my brother is actually disabled too. He's mm -hmm. mentally challenged too, and they jumped him when he got off the bus, wow. and my mom took it to to police, and they didn't do nothing about it. Mm -hmm. So kind of like when I seen the video, it kind of struck a nerve a nerve home. I know I can do something about it now, so I put the videos on YouTube, and I put the link in my bio on Instagram, and then I made a post, and I was like, go check my, my link out or whatever. People started clicking it, immediately I got reactions. Like, an hour later, YouTube deleted all the videos. Mm. It made me so mad. <laughs> it made me so mad. I said, all right, so they deleted it. I put it on Instagram. Put all the videos on Instagram. All three videos, like part video one, part one, video one, part two, I put all of them. I woke up the next day, I had 10,000 followers on Instagram. Wow. People mm -hmm. had all the all the like videos had over like five thousand comments. People just kept like, um, to, like telling me like, hey, call the news outlet, say mm -hmm. do this, do that. So we start using I use social media to keep promoting it, and within a week it got on the air of ABC, NBC, wow. NBC Ten, and I, I did interviews with them, and from there like he, he got justice for everything. Mm -hmm. So. That video, it really struck a nerve in every, to everybody, all yeah. three of them. And as a result, you created the Bully Project. Yeah, I called it the Bully Project because it wasn't really a name for it. It mm -hmm. was just like Justice for Quran, but I wanted to name it something bigger than that because they were bullying him, and he was mentally challenged. Like, that wasn't okay. Kind of reminded me of my brother. Mm -hmm. I didn't see my, him in the video. I seen my brother. Mm -hmm. So I was just like, there's no way, you know, anybody should even go through that. He didn't fight back, he didn't fight back either. Mm -hmm. He just cried and went home and... He got beat again. Wow. And he did, uh, so you used social media as a um, champion for change. As a result, Attorney General Den also filed felony charges against the yeah. three wow. young men. Okay, so we want to hear the whole story, yeah. Angelise. I mean, we under, we appreciate you being humble, but. Uh, yeah, they, they got justice for him. They, the boys got felonies. Actually, when one of them got arrested, he told the cop, I'm, I can punch you in your face too. There's wow. a video, the video surfaced real quick, real wow. fast. He told the cop that. Mm -hmm. He's like, get the camera out of my face. Y'all can get hit too. Wow. Get out of my face. His mm -hmm. mom's like, please move the camera, please. And his mom's like pushing him away and just like saying, you know, he's not right. Mm -hmm. da -da. But they got charges. And I haven't heard of the kids. I haven't seen the kids to this day. Still, it's been two years. But hey, that he got justice. He's fine now. He's, mm -hmm. uh, after we got everything, after everything happened and stuff, as time went on, we got him Tim boots. We got him Nike uh, sweatsuits, hats. He just went out. The YMCA provided him with a cell phone and a bike. We did a lot of stuff for him. We did a couple mm -hmm. fundraisers. Nothing went to me. I gave it all to him. So mm -hmm. everything that, all everything that people gave, we the Bully Project T-shirts and stuff that we sold, they went back to him. He got everything that he needed. His mom struggled with getting him whatever he needed. So everything, had worked out for him. Mm -hmm. That is really great. It, so yes. I hope everybody's listening to see what an impact you can have yes. if you just put the effort through. Mm -hmm. And especially mm -hmm. since at first it was deleted and you said, you know, I'm not going to give up. Mad. I'm not going to give up. I'm going to keep I, on trying yeah. until somebody pays attention. I didn't notice that they deleted it until I started getting comments like, what are you talking about? And I'm like, huh? And I go, you see like the first 50 comments is like, oh my God, that's so bad. Oh my God, why mm -hmm. would somebody do that? And then the comments started coming, 
what are they talking about? I don't see nothing. YouTube deleted it. Mm -hmm. Deleted, deleted, deleted. Everybody started wow. telling me. So I went to my email and they're like, oh, well, it's um, disturbing content. So we deleted it. Mm. I was wow. like, okay. Okay, YouTube. Yeah. Right. But it's still. It's still yes. Just yeah, served. Yes. That's right. That's it. So you still keep in contact with Quran? Yeah, here and there. He lives in Newark. I live in Newcastle. So when I see him, you know. He hangs out with me. I was with him in the summer. I was with him, mm -hmm. skateboarding with him, just relaxing with him, you know, making sure he was all right. So he's good. That's very awesome. good, very good. So how do you feel now? Like you are an ambassador for change here. How does it feel? It's, at first it was overwhelming. Mm -hmm. I couldn't go nowhere because everyone kind of like, <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> it hurt. But it's a little better now. People. Kind of, sometimes people do freak out when they see me still, but I talk to everybody. I just feel as though, like I just, it's just a, a face to to something. Everybody has a face to something, and mm -hmm. my face is basically like to bullying. Like everybody knows me because of that. Like I'm starting to visit schools. I was actually at a Chase Center Philanthropy Day event today, mm -hmm. and I spoke about the same thing. And um, the Servium Girls Academy, mm -hmm. I'm talking there, and then there's high schools. Like I've, I've talked at Newark. I'm trying to go back there. And um, middle schools, Gauger, uh, Kirk, I think there's a couple other schools. I can't remember right now, but there's a couple schools that keep in touch with me. I'm trying to visit and stuff. So I just feel as though, like, the message should be, you know, it be, should be portrayed. Mm -hmm. Everybody already has seen the effects, and it's not only a disabled person, but it's anybody in general. Mm -hmm. Like, it just happened to be a disabled person in the video, but... People don't realize that it's more bullying that goes on yeah. than what they actually see or right. notice. Right. Especially now with social media. So as much as it can do those positive sides, we get a lot with bullying all over and now there are new yeah. areas and avenues. People like come to me for advice and they're like, Hey, like someone posted this about me or like, hey, mm -hmm. you know, they commented on my page and I'm like, delete it, block it. Have a good day. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> Say it again. It again. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Smile. Very good. They're mad. That's right. <laughs> they do. Yes. That's great. Well, we thank you for coming yes. and sharing your story. Now, can people still support you? Do you still have things going on? Yeah. Well, we can get um, people to support you, and how do they do that? I'm actually, actually tomorrow, I'm spending a day at William Penn High School. Okay. And I'm talking to their um LGBT club and their bullying club, mm -hmm. and I'm spending the day in the culinary arts program with the chef. Mm -hmm. I met him today at the at the event. He said, "Hey, you know, come by to our school." I'm like, "Okay, well, I'll spend the day with you tomorrow." He's yes. like, "Okay, that's fine." <laughs> so yeah, he actually so gave me. How an do they contact you? What's the best way to contact you? Email. I check email every day. Address. What's your email address? The Bully Tr Project with three ones one 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 at gmail dot com. All right, so that's say it slowly for everybody. The Bully Project. 111 at gmail.com. Oh, okay. okay. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Well, yes. we thank you. We look forward to you coming back again. Yes. Telling us more, giving us an update maybe in the I spring. Got a shout out. Oh, that's right. Yes, yes. All right. Let's First of all, you, you got to give a shout out to being a uh, recently graduated Wildcat. 2015. That's right. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> right. Congratulations. <laughs> um, well, of course, my family and okay. everybody. Yes. But um, is this one boy, his name is Gavin. He recently started. Uh, changing the course of my family. He's one of my mom's students, and she mentors him, and she mm -hmm. tutors him, and she helps him out. And uh, yeah, he's he's been a really big blessing to our life, and we encourage him to do good in school. And mm -hmm. you know, he everyone thinks he's not the best kid, but he's really an amazing kid. So yes, shout out to Gavin. I, like I Gavin. told him, you know, oh, shout out, Gavin. yes, congratulations, <laughs> keep up the good work. There you go. All right, please stand by. We'll be back with more. wants to not work. When I was on disability for nine years, I felt horrible. I felt horrible about myself. So think about all the individuals that are out there that are not being given an opportunity. I love what I'm doing and the rewards that I get from it. For instance, one of my clients, I introduced him to the 12 steps and he's now 18 months sober and he's working as a care support specialist another company and seeing stuff like that you know makes me love my job even more seeing the hope in clients eyes you know that they can do this
Jessica was integrated through the Charlton program. At the end of her years in high school, she went to Wesley College. Wesley College is the one that sought her opportunities to get her job. It means a lot um, to have her out in the working world. Um, she really enjoys that. Jessica is the sweetest young woman. She is just lovely, lively, uh, always eager to work and just uh, have some independence. Do you need help with any of this? Or you got I'll, I'll take care of it. Okay. We support individuals who are coming right out of the school systems and a lot of the individuals we support seem to be much happier when they are out in the community. I think that Jessica, from the time she's been here, she's been very well accepted. Um, she's part of the team and people seem to enjoy her and I think that uh, the folks that we have here, they're agreeable to have somebody else come in that they can help and actually she's helping us too. My hopes and dreams are to, for her to keep on doing what she's doing, you know, having a life of her own maybe one day and it's a, a great feeling to know that there is employment out there for her and she enjoys it a lot. Welcome back. All right, so we have, he's now an alumni, right? <laughs> yeah, he's not <laughs> a newcomer, he's just part of the show. So we have uh, part of our team here tonight with Breaking Barriers. So we know Breaking Barriers, but I believe Breaking Barriers is expanding and really breaking barriers, right? Yes, we are. All right. Thanks for having me. So since I'm a team member, shouldn't I be sitting over here? Or? Yeah, well, we rotate. We it's rotate. Right. Not That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us what's new. Well, what's new is um, I think within the past two years, our governor, Jack Markell, um, had an initiative about helping people with disabilities. As you know, I have a disability. Right. To get them employed, get employees to see that instead of them sitting home, they can be working now. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, he has someone come together and put a video together, Pathway to Employment, and they did the release of the video on November the 12th at Breaking Barriers. Okay. So we hosted around 70 people, including the governor. I spoke, the governor spoke. It was a young lady named Kayla that spoke. It was very enlightening. And um, the video was put together trying Walgreens to get employees to understand that mm -hmm. they're not helpless, they mm -hmm. can do something, mm -hmm. but here's an initiative to help them move forward. Okay, so what's your part of that initiative? Well, my part of the initiative is one, since I'm self-employed and I run Breaking oh, okay. Barriers and I have a disability, okay. it's shown that if you, if you um, can't be employed by someone, oh, by right. that you can work for yourself. That's right. And yes. establish your own business. And a lot of them have that in them, it's just, they're not given that chance. Mm -hmm. So with them hosting it at Breaking Brands, they did a couple things. One, Breaking Brands, as you know, I work with the kids. Yes, right. I'm open to employ someone with a disability because mm -hmm. okay. that'll give them a chance working with me and the things that I do, and it helped push them further to their initiative, what they're trying to do. The other part is it's helping the governor out because I already told them as the video travels around the state of Delaware, mm -hmm. Dwayne Adams will travel with the video oh, also right. to help <laughs> speak and help them understand that someone who has a disability that, you know, we can work, we can do whatever we need to do, just mm -hmm. give us that chance. And that's the disabled people, they still work out. That's, it. that's yes. what my fitness center does, that's what they work out. So whether it's cerebral palsy and a wheelchair, sin amputee, whatever it might be, we can adapt to the training program for them. So now you have someone with a disability in good physical condition, their self-esteem is even higher, mm -hmm. and now they're ready to start their own business or work for someone, that's adding to the workforce, that's changing the economy, Absolutely. and all that started through breaking barriers. All yes. right. And so for people who don't, don't know, yes. tell us about your disability. We need a quick synopsis. Yes. Yes. Quick synopsis. <laughs> Not the long time. Okay. okay. Well, quick synopsis is I'm from Philadelphia. I was sitting on my mother's steps in Philadelphia, and I took a straight bullet in my left eye. Mm -hmm. So the bullet went across my face. I'm legally blind in the right eye, prosthetic in the left, no sense of smell, and that's the disability that they gave me. 
but I don't look at it as a disability. Mm -hmm. I look at it as um, a blessing because I accomplished so much yes. afterwards. First, life. Right, exactly. And then everything that came from there. So, you know, I'm happy. Well, come on, Brief, we still need a little more of what About, came from there. Yes, that. exactly. Some people might be okay. watching for the first time. Well, what came from that is um, after I was released from the hospital, I took up the sport of rowing crew. Mm -hmm. A lot of you know it from the Olympics. So um, I tried out for the U.S. National Adaptive Team in 2001, made the team in 2002, went to Seville, Spain, and won a bronze medal with my team. I um, represented the U.S. two additional team years after that. We didn't medal, but I was overseas um, training and racing. Um, I was a staff, I just also received an award from NAACP in 2010 for Outstanding Citizens. Oh, congratulations. I'm Humanitarian of the Year from the Masons. I'm not a Mason, but I work with the youth there mm -hmm. okay. and adults also. And numerous interviews, magazines. I wrote a book, The Race After the Storm. Mm -hmm. um, right now, we're trying to see if we can get that into a movie. <coughs> Hint. <laughs> Anyway, no, that's right. um, and these are just some of the things I've done over the years. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you figure the second part of my life, because this happened when I was 38 years old, mm -hmm. the second part of my life has been like a rebirth, okay. something completely different. And that's something, a story that people with disabilities, regardless of what it is, need to understand. Mm -hmm. Don't hold your head down. Even able-bodied people, yes. don't hold your head down with things that might come across or anything like that. The Lord has another that's direction that's for right. you. He yes. has a path for you. And it's always bright on that other side. That's so it. my path is very bright. That's yes. It. And for those of us who may not know where the Breaking Barriers gym is, because honestly, That's when it. I saw him tonight, I said, oh, you coming to work? <laughs> and I'm going to bug her. <laughs> Don't worry. I already bugged somebody else a couple of times, so she knows. <laughs> he said, no, not tonight. I was like, well, I still need to come check you out. <laughs> yeah, because we had a good time on the show last we time, did. didn't we? I, I have keys. Good we can go around now and open up the door. That's I don't think we're appropriately dressed. Isn't that right, Cousin Kim? We'll adapt <laughs> to it. That's what we do. But Breaking Barriers is not too far from here. The yes. address is 503 mm -hmm. Hawley Street. That's H-A-W-L-E-Y. Mm -hmm. And it sits on, it looks like a small street. It's a two-way street. And anyone that wants to call, you can call me direct. Area code 267-979-7219. 267-979-7219. Our website is www.breakingbarriers05.org. Anyone who has a business, and I have to put this out there, mm -hmm. business, um, supporter, um, we still need funds to make things happen. Okay, gotcha. yes, And this yes. is, this is um, something that's a great advantage to a lot of youth, mm -hmm. disabled, adults, whatever it might be. We still need funding to make this happen because one of my greatest and best partners that I'm bringing to Delaware West Point Military Academy. Okay, wow, yeah. I partnered with them, and they want to bring their training program in collaboration with Breaking Barriers out of my facility where the cadets will come down, help train some class other than myself and my trainers. And also, I'm trying to get them to bring their, they, they have a prep school. So I'm trying okay. to get the learning program from their prep school on my computers. So that mm -hmm. way, not only are these youth, instead of shooting in the street and any mm -hmm. other violence, they're training, getting better in condition, but they're getting academics. So overall, something way better. That's it. That's exciting. Exciting. Yes. Program. So yeah. please, once again, the website. Oh, I'll give it again. <laughs> the website, is, we have a new website, it's, 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 it's beautiful. It's www.breakingbarriers05.org. The address is 503 Hawley Street, H-A-W-L-E-Y. And you can call me directly, 267-979-7219. And anyone that want to do any kind of work, support, funding, whatever it is, I'm telling you, this is a great program to collaborate with, work with, whatever you might want to do. We're breaking barriers. Yes. That's it. Yes. So all those organizations who have scholarships, mm -hmm. they can nice yeah, exactly. Give you a scholarship. exactly. And we know exactly where it's going, how it's going. How it's working. Yes. We can do a lot. We and the greatness that comes out of it. That's it. Yes, for all bodies. That's right. <laughs> mm -hmm. Everybody. Yes. <laughs> No matter, even us. Even <laughs> us, I know. I'm going to be on the phone tomorrow calling both I, of you. That's it. Call, call me. That's right. <laughs> and I'm going to be ready. And yes, I'm going to report right. back. <laughs> I said, I might be mad the first day, but I'll get over it. Isn't yes, that right? Yes, you will. Yes, you will. <laughs> that's it. I yes. can't remember working out being mad at my show. <laughs> yes. Thinking, oh, why would we do this? <laughs> so we're queued up for the video. We want to say, let's add it. Can we get it one more time?
Walgreens has this Ready program, which is uh, the hiring of retail employees with disabilities initiative. And working with Service Source, they brought us Alaric uh, for a six week program. And he did very well through that program. And a couple months after that, we brought him on as a full time team member. So, Alaric, we got the red card here for the back stock. So, you want to go through each shelf, uh, shelf by shelf, keep it neat and organized. Right. All right, excellent. Thank you. My job uh, here at uh, Walgreens, I like it because it has a friendly atmosphere and uh, my other employees, well, they uh, they basically treat me, you know, a very likable guy, like just a, a regular guy with without any disabilities, you know. I help uh, unload uh, the truck and uh, and stock the shelves till there's no more to be stocked or until the shelves are full either way. When I first started here at uh, Walgreens, I did get a little nervous, but then I, I got over it. Uh, I really wanted him to, you know, socialize more and be productive and develop, you know, self-esteem that everybody needs to. and. By you know having a, a good job at Walgreens, it's really improved his character and maturity uh, quite a bit. You know, the sky's the limit for him, really. Hello, sir. How are you? Good. I'm good. He's very well accepted by the other employees. Um, he's treated like an average, normal member of our staff. Nobody looks at Alaric like he has a disability. Have, have a good day and be well. You too. He's a member of this family, this store, and everybody treats him all that, that way. I would definitely recommend to other employers uh, to hire any team members with disabilities. They are very much an asset to any company. All right, thank you, Alaric. Thank sure. you. Sure. No problem. Don't exactly, you know, uh, uh, let others, you know, look you down. You can prove uh, to people that, that you can work just as hard as they can. Fellas, come on, let's go, let's go. We're in the place, let's go. Come on, Falcons, let's go. First thing I would say is this. At Breaking Barriers, we do not use the word can't. Basically, I was an innocent shooting victim where I was shot with a bullet that went into my left eye and it currently lies behind the right eye. It gave me partial sight in the right eye, prosthetic in the left. What we doing next? Keep running, just follow me. Don't think just because you're in a wheelchair, you have no vision, you're a single amputee, whatever it might be, don't think that's a stopping block for you. If you want employment, seek the employment and use your skills and talent to grow above that. Well, I found breaking barriers because the inner city youth are based on basketball, football, baseball. And the sport of rowing is more mental than physical. You have to be in shape, but it's a thinking man sport. So we can channel the kids to do something differently, give them an alternative. So through breaking barriers, we can help them with any violence, obesity, disability, and a drive to continue and go more. My goal is to continue to grow breaking barriers. Hopefully we can go state to state, city to city, and share the same message. Find your gift. Take your time and understand your talents, your skills. And from there, that will help you with your drive and your mission to move forward to whatever you're trying to do. Good work, fellas. Good work, fellas. Good work, fellas. Since Kayla was born, um, we were looking for ways that we could help her have the best future she could have. We started our own nonprofit in Delaware, and that's called 321 Foundation. And we're starting our second year with that, and it's all about celebration and socialization. The biggest thing you, you find as a parent, you learn from other parents. So there's lots of professionals out there, but um, really hearing the stories from another parent make, make the big difference, and that's what we want to be able to do. I'm in third grade. I just like art and reading is like awesome. And I gonna be a teacher one day. Kayla can do the, whatever she wants to do. The sky's the limit. The, people would never talk about someone with a disability or Down syndrome going to college or getting married or driving a car or having a full-time job or a career somewhere. And those things are happening today. And uh, we're doing everything we can to make sure Kayla has the resources 
uh, available to her to make that happen. We work with clients who have come and been admitted to the Delaware Psychiatric Center. Our peers have all been through what our current clients are going through. And they can say, you know, I'm the evidence. I'm the evidence that you too can turn your life around. Susan basically is our uh, drug and alcohol guru. I'm a person who was depressed, suicidal, and an alcoholic, and I'm working in a job right now that I can give back all that was given to me and provide hope for these, you know, my clients. So I look at it like... All right, welcome back. All right, Claudia, can you introduce our next I can. I am better? very excited we to have welcoming siblings. Back. Welcoming back, of yes. course. <laughs> the lovely Jacqueline. Hi, Jacqueline. Oh, there's that smile. Yes. <laughs> I was nervous. I was thinking, she's not going to smile, but it's beautiful. Thank you. And her um, bodacious big brother, oh, Johnny, hi. and their lovely mommy, Mrs. Meads. Hi, everyone. Yes. And so we're excited because they are starting a nonprofit organization, and they volunteer, they tutor and volunteer at South Bridge Neighborhood House. Okay. So they are just awesome little people all over, and we want to hear more about um, everything that you all are doing. Congratulations on being such great citizens. Yes. I'm Thank you. Very proud of you both. So tell us what made you decide to start your nonprofit. Well, like um, when I like I do a lot of sports and like when I wanted to do other things besides sports, like when cheerleading season wasn't going on and I was really bored and at home. My mom found chess for her brother and I, mm -hmm. and it was like really interesting. And I was like, "Oh, other kids should do this because this is fun." And it helped me with my grades because it like affects the way you look at things. You think mm. ahead, and you think of the consequences of your actions and stuff. Okay. Very oh, nice. Good. Yes. Like uh, yeah. All right. So through that, you decided to. Well, we both volunteer at the neighborhood house. Uh, Last year, we started out just helping them with the homework. Then we slowly implemented a chess program. She also has a cheerleading thing that's going on, too. So nice. um, the chess program is going really well. We actually just came back from a tournament. We almost got the team trophy, but didn't by like half a point. Wow. But you know, it was the kids' first tournament, so <laughs> yeah. it did really Very good. good. Yes. Very good. I can first tell you're time. a good coach yeah. and cheerleader there, Johnny. <laughs> uh, but yeah, everything's going really well. Chess program, I like it. What are the ages of the young people in the program? My youngest is nine, the oldest is 12. All right. So and how many sure. people do you have right now? About, is this a lot to count? Um, I'd say anywhere from like 25 to 30. -ish. Okay. Oh wow, that's a lot. That is, that's Very impressive, lot. yes. yes. Now, how do you, what days do you meet? Mm -hmm. How do you get together? How could someone join? And how if somebody else wanted to duplicate your program, could you guys help them get yeah. started? Yes. You got that one? <laughs> I right, love it. Um, you can contact both of us. Um, Johnny's Instagram is Johnny Chess Boss. Okay. Like no yeah, dots like or it. underscores. Mine is Lady Knights dot Newcastle. Okay. Um, our website is WilmingtonUrbanChess.com. Mm -hmm. You can contact my mom there. Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, mom. Yeah, come on, mom. Yes, okay. Jump on in here. So, as far as the nonprofit goes, what we're trying to do is get the word out about chess, especially in the city of Wilmington. Mm -hmm. People keep saying they want to, um, you know, revive Wilmington and make Wilmington better and things like that. It starts with the kids. Yes. You can't sit back and say you want to change things if you're not willing to invest in the children. Mm -hmm. That's the bottom line. Yes. This past weekend, like you said, we took some of the chess kids to the chess tournament. I paid for that out of my own pocket. Wow. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, when you have chess, there's chess fees. So anybody trying to do chess, there's a basically a membership that you have to pay. It's $50 per child wow. before you even pay 
for your chess tournament fees. Okay. So that was about you know $125 per child. So what we're trying to do is raise funds so we can have other kids mm -hmm. understand and learn how to play chess because with chess, the more you play, the better you get. Yes. Of course. And also it boosts test scores. Mm -hmm. Johnny and Jacqueline are both honor roll students and I attribute, to, attribute that to chess. Mm -hmm. You know, so you can't lose playing chess at all. That's it. So again, our website is WilmingtonUrbanChess.com. Mm -hmm. We are planning to have a chess tournament pretty soon. Um, we're shooting for January. We're also going to be shooting for March, and then we're going to be shooting again for September to have a chess tournament. Okay. So we want to keep this thing going. In Philadelphia, they've got a huge chess support system there. Everybody, the Philadelphia schools, lots of people support chess there, mm -hmm. and we want to do the same thing for the city of Wilmington. Yes. Now, you all did win an award a few months ago, correct? Congratulations. Tell us a little bit about that. The Wilmington Award. Oh! Um. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay, we have so many. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we won the Wilmington Award for being like good citizens and volunteering mm -hmm. and like showing kids that you can do other things besides like going in the street and like having fun with your friends. You can like learn something and have fun at the same time. Okay. And then you also won it um, among your many accolades. You also won a Disney Award, did yeah. you not? Yeah. So tell us about that. Yeah. That's exciting. Um, I don't remember when we won it exactly, but it was a five hundred dollar grant to basically push forward the chess program we had at the time. When we got it, we really didn't have any resources like mm -hmm. to teach the chess. It's sort of me just taking like my one person or board there. I didn't really have any books to teach them. Like mm -hmm. when you teach chess, there's a lot of chess theories and chess openings and stuff, so you need a lot of books for it. So we didn't have any books. I couldn't really. I was teaching all the kids the same thing, which isn't really good because if a team's known for just doing one thing, uh. and there's, a, there's something that beats that, mm -hmm. then the entire team loses. Not to mention different kids like different play styles. Like one kid might like playing super defensive, one kid might like offensive and defensive one kid might like you know different things mm -hmm. so we won the grant i got chess clocks chess books chess boards and just some other stuff and really helped the program take off well, so, I, I so now when you say yeah. you guys are going to do something in january you're going to organize a competition here yes so we are going to have a competition okay. we're going to invite um thomas edison kids mm -hmm. the kids okay. the neighborhood house kids all different kids and kids that don't even know how to play chess, mm -hmm. get them out so that they can see and get interested and engaged. And girls play chess, Jacqueline plays chess. That's so, right. you know, I it's like funny because at her boys. school she plays chess and she beats the boys. That's right. You know, they look at her like, oh, she doesn't know how to play, and she'll sit down and she's like, okay, let's do it. And the boy's like, a girl beat me. <laughs> so, you know, she has to let them know. That's right. That's like, good because thing. I do cheerleading at school, they're like, oh, she's just a dumb cheerleader. And then when I like whoop their butt in chess, they're like, oh. Okay. <laughs> There it is. That's good. <laughs> she doesn't beat she yes. whoops. <laughs> Don't wonder. So that's a good thing. So when, when you all play chess at home, are you pretty competitive? Um, yeah, there's a lot of trash talk. <laughs> 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 he thinks that I am not as good as him, which is not true, but I'm like one degree worse than him. I mean, if I really, really wanted to, I could beat him. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. All right. Watch That's it. not true. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I was going to say, Johnny doesn't look like he's, he's going to hold back. <laughs> no, no. So for kids that may be reluctant about playing chess because it's new, it's not played in their house, what words of advice, um, you know, how can we make chess fun so that people stop down to the neighborhood house and say, I want to see the, uh, the Meads twins, That's the Meads siblings. <laughs> Um, when I first chess. started chess, I did not like it at all because I had to sit down and like learn the rules and stuff. Mm -hmm. But like as I went on, learning different stuff and being able to like think about it in my head, like I think about it as a game of war. Like you gotta protect the king, you gotta move the queen, and like everything is a different like power you have. Mm -hmm. but, like I think it's fun now. Like if you think of it as in a certain way, it's better. So okay. thinking it as like plastic pieces of across the board. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> That's actually an analogy I use a lot when I teach the kids is. Don't think of it as a board. Think of it as a war going on. Okay. And then they immediately see it like, oh. Okay. That's actually really interesting now. All right. Uh, and parents who haven't yes. been exposed. So we may have parents who say, well, I don't know how to get my kids mm -hmm. into chess because I don't know anything about it. How would you encourage parents to jump on in? Well, like I said, the benefits itself, you know, boosting test scores, 
understanding people, unique friends, patients. There's so many benefits to chess. Um, so even that alone, if nothing else, saying, okay, you know what, my child might be struggling with school or something, mm -hmm. let me let them at least come and see. Or, you know, my child might be shy because Johnny, for instance, he wasn't really into sports and I had to figure out something for him to do. He took mm -hmm. the chess like nobody's business and okay. that's his thing. So, you know, there are resources out there for parents who aren't sure what they want to do with their child. But the main thing is getting your child involved in something and giving back to the community. I stress mm -hmm. that to my kids. You have to give back to the community. That's mm -hmm. it. Very so important. Right. That's the only way Wilmington is going to get better. All yes. Right. Well, we thank you so much for coming yes. on and sharing. I'm going to make certain that we also contribute to your program, so we will definitely uh, give a donation so that we can help some young people out. I think thank we you. at Congo Children's Corner would like to be a part when you guys have your tournament. Yes, Canada. that would be so awesome. So please let us know so that we can have you guys on to talk about it and maybe after the event mm -hmm. we can have some winners little people exactly yes, so yes. Like a lot of fun. We so we've got that. a plan right we mm -hmm. got all right yes well we thank you all so much and please stand by we'll be right back with more fun clients eyes you know that they can Beats we gotta shake them off and get rid of them. We can't let his evil influence us. We gotta take this down. We got a master plan. All we need is God to lend a helping hand. Welcome back. All right, speaking of alumni, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we have another partner yes. who's here, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Well, welcome, partner. And how are you today? All right. You good? Mr. Keith James for what? President, 2032. <laughs> 2032. <laughs> I love it. Let's get started now. 
Let's What's start up? now. And you have with you tonight? Uh, this is Kai Reynolds. Hi. Hi, Kai. Nice to meet you. All right. So welcome to the show. Thank you for having us again. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yes. yeah, yeah I love being here. I love being here. That's I love right. being here. We love having you, too. I, I, you know what? <laughs> I think about the first time that you were on. So I was so nervous. You have grown were you? so I much. Was, I was nervous. Oh I was so nervous. Because, I mean, you, they say you're going to be on TV. You get all nervous about it the first time. So it's just like, wow. it's just like, but I found like when you start talking about the things that you're passionate yes. about, you guys are very welcoming. So the love here is just great. So, I mean. And you're very good. genuine. So it's very yes, easy. It you is. have a great story to tell. And it was just very inspirational. Because we remember from the first time. We do. When I text you, you're my go-to guy. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. So yeah, it's just, it. we've come a long way. It's been like yes. a year and a half it now, has. a year and a half. So. a lot of growth here. Yes, yes. yes. It's so nice I mean, to be able to watch. Is, isn't it nice? <laughs> I know. To be able to until presidency time. Yes, exactly. <laughs> we exactly. got some time though. We do have some time. We have Quarter enough time 11. to make sure everybody is registered to vote. Okay. But yes. 17 years Starting from now. Starting with the babies. That's oh yes, right. yes. So as long as they were born. Keeping them straight and so they can vote. We're gonna get it right. <laughs> Y'all ain't right. You all are funny. <laughs> um, but nah, we've, we've been, um, you know, doing a lot um, as far as like the nonprofit work is concerned and the community work. Um, I had an opportunity to speak um, at they, the White House had a community uh, leaders conference there. Mm -hmm. And we were already in town for um, a United Way Worldwide event that I spoke with uh, the Reverend Dr. Otis Moss III mm -hmm. from Chicago. Okay. And so I was one of the keynote speakers with him. And um, and there we just learned so much, and it was just humbling because you know from where I come from and this, mm -hmm. you know the things that I went through, you're not supposed to be at the White House speaking, you know what I mean? And then just there was a humbling experience, and um, you know being at Wilmington U, I met Kai, who's the president of Student United Way, and she has some great ideas um, on how she wants to better the community, mm -hmm. and um, you know a lot of us don't have the resources to like do the things that we dream about, or you know mm -hmm. we have limited resources, and so I said you know. Let me be your manager. Let me help you build this dream. You know what I mean? Pay because it forward. Yes, yes, because I mean, because about. you think about it. You, exactly. you guys do that for so many people. You know what I mean? You say any questions I have, and I'll text you the questions. You may not. You, well, you <laughs> see the thing. The thing. I, I'm sorry, but the thing with light skinned people, they don't text back. Is that what? what? It is. What? It is. You text me back. You do text me back. What? You do text me back. You take at least like a day and a half. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, sorry. <laughs> I'm clutching my pearls. <laughs> but nah, in all, right along. in all seriousness, though, um, yeah, we. So she has a lot of great ideas, and I just want to be able to um, do what people have done for me, and just like you know, yes, be able to help direct that path. So you want to talk about what you, what you, uh, what your plans are? Yes. <laughs> Um, yeah, me and Keith, we met at Wilmington. Mm -hmm. He was working for United Way of Delaware, and I was student United Way president. Mm -hmm. So he kind of took me under his wing in a way. And we just started talking about what we wanted to do, what kind of visions we had. And I said, well, I have a vision, but it's more so um, adding more to the community. I feel like sometimes we have a lot of resources, but it's not always enough. So I want to see what I could do to put more out there. So I have this thing, it's called The Time Is Now. And time stands for to motivate to inspire motivation everywhere. Mm -hmm. So we actually came with that together. Yeah. I'll give credit where it's due. We came with that it. together. Yes. <laughs> but um, we wanted to see what we can do within the community. So I was saying, oh, maybe we can open up more orphanages or more mm -hmm. shelters mm -hmm. and more recreational centers so that people have somewhere to go that has a positive environment. Mm -hmm. You know, I wanted people to be like, oh, after school, where are you going? We going to time? Yeah. We going to time <laughs> after school? Because I know when I was growing up, everybody was always going to the Powell Center after school. I said, I want to be like that. I want everybody yes. to come to where I'm going. Yeah. I want a big impact. So, so yeah, he's it. definitely helping me with that. And what about your motivational speeches? <laughs> you got to plug it in. You got to plug yes. it in. Everything. You got to plug yeah. it in. Well, actually, um, so I grew up and my parents were pastors, so I got the chance to see them like go out, do motivational speeches and different things like that. So um, I was like, well, what was my story? And I know growing up, a platform that I had all the time was bullying. And I know people sometimes like, they take that lightly. They're just like, it was like, mm. who cares? You got to brush that off. But if you actually talk to someone that actually went through that, you're just mm -hmm. like, wow, I didn't know even just laughing or being a part of that, I could actually help someone. Mm -hmm. So. Um, I was telling him about it, and that was my platform. But after a while, I started taking on other topics, and now I'm just doing different speeches, different places. Mm -hmm. So were you actually bullied? Mm -hmm. You had friends who were bullied? What made you? No, it was so me. It was me. About um, middle school was kind of like you know everybody picks on everybody. I think it was about when I got to high school. It was more so the heat was coming on, and mm -hmm. it was getting crazy, and I kind of 
forgot who I was. Like, mm -hmm. it made me want to shy away from who I was as a person. Until mm -hmm. I got to college, I want to start to bloom again mm -hmm. and get back to who I was. And so, so I guess that gave me more of a push than actually put down more than anything. Yeah. You can go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. So what helped you during that time? Because there may be some little people watching that are experiencing what you went through. So what do you think really would, what helped you? Um, I would say at the time, I honestly didn't use the resources that I was supposed to use. I would mm -hmm. say I cried a lot. I kind of shunned away from my family. I was scared. I was angry. I was mad. Why doesn't people like me? I look mm -hmm. in the mirror trying to, uh, trying to figure out why I was a problem when I had to realize that these people actually had a problem within themselves that they yes. wanted to come towards me. Mm -hmm. um, but over time, I realized it actually brought my family closer because after I sat them down and told them everything I was going through, actually made me and my father closer, me and my mother closer, me and my sisters. We're all like more of a closer family now. Mm -hmm. So even if you don't have a family member to go to, I would honestly say going to a close relative or a close friend. I know that's kind of everybody says, oh, everyone says that, but it really does help when someone mm -hmm. is listening to what you go through and you can actually show them the pain that you felt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How long did you hold on to it before you shared? About mm -hmm. three years. Wow. wow. See, I thought that was the case. Three years. And the thing I found interesting about it all is, you know, she said it took her three years. For me, I didn't admit that I had a drug problem until I decided to get clean. You know what right. I mean? And then we see a lot of times in high school that, that you know, we all face a different form of adversity, whether right. it's bullying, whether it's drugs, like in my mm -hmm. case. Um, it was, it's a lot of different things that happen, violence, you know what I mean? And, we, and then we're losing a lot of our peers at an alarming rate, you know what I mean? In high school, from ninth grade to 10th grade, I had lost five friends, and one of them was to cancer. Everybody else was either drugs mm -hmm. or suicide. Mm -hmm. right. And so this is not normal. So we're going through a different type of generational shift right now. Mm -hmm. And it's on us for really to start to embrace what we've been through. And that's, and that's what right. we talk about all the time. Um, you know, not necessarily just our stories, but how do we get others to embrace what they've mm -hmm. been through and use that as a motivational force to push you in the direction of whatever you want to go. People want to be musicians, people want to be basketball players. Mm -hmm. and I have nothing against if you want to go to the NBA, but don't tell me you want to go to the NBA and you're going to McDonald's all the time and you're not studying in school because that's, right. not, that's mm -hmm. not the that's NBA not mindset. Yes. If you want to be in the NBA, you have to get good grades. You have to eat healthy. Mm -hmm. You have to make healthy choices. Yes. And so we want people to, you know, actually back up where they want to say, I have to start making healthy choices for 2032. Okay. You know what I mean? Exactly. <laughs> I got, I got to be out the president. Yeah. <laughs> Shameless Joke? plug. Yes. Shameless plug. But no, nah, I mean, I hope that, no, because I know you're not allowed to talk about politics on here. That's a joke. So, but no, nah, <laughs> for now, for now. But okay. I mean, but definitely, you know, just, just talking about where we come from. And, mm -hmm. and I think if we remember where we come from and remember the things that we've been through, it makes it a lot easier for us to, you know, lend out that helping hand to our community. Mm -hmm. and I think that's really what we want to do. You want to talk a little bit about... Um, Operation Wilm U, like what we're trying to do on campus. Oh, yes. We are working on Operation Wilm U. Um, that's where students can come together and talk about certain issues. Actually, when I reached out to you, well, you reached out to me first. Yeah. But I, I actually like that idea because I'm also, I'm criminal justice and political science majors. Mm -hmm. So I actually liked what you were saying, how a lot of times, at our school, you know, we, we come to meetings and we do this and that, but a lot of times we don't always talk about the issues. So I like that you were bringing that into the school, that mm -hmm. we can finally say, hey, I'm from this part of life or I'm from this part of life mm -hmm. and I have this to say about this project. Yeah, and that's, uh, Operation Wilmy was just pretty much for us to like really talk about the adversity that we've been through, talk about where we come from and the different backgrounds that we have. Mm -hmm. Wilmington U has a very diverse campus. Yes. And, and the one thing that we really see in our generation is that we don't accept people for where they come from. You know, mm -hmm. and then a lot of us don't really know where we come from. Mm -hmm. And so that kind of creates like a, a blank space to where we allow others to fill in for us. But mm -hmm. we need to be, you know, life is not a matter of uh, discovery. It's a matter of creation. And so we want people to start to creating, you know, what they would like their life to look like. And so the sensitive topics that we want to talk about, you know, um, is just to really, so when you see, you know, what happened at UD, that whole thing blew up. And, and people were like, you know, they were frustrated. And they said, well, regardless of what it was, we've been wanting to have this conversation for so long, but it took something like this to happen for mm -hmm. us to be able to fill the green and actually talk about it. So we don't ever want that to happen to women to you. We want to okay. be able to have those conversations beforehand so we, we won't have any type of uh, racial issues. We'll be mm -hmm. able to be open with our student body and create that strong foundation. Because if you don't know, women to you is growing and it's going it fast. Is. Yes. It is. And, and I'm telling it. you, one day, hopefully they name a building after me oh, one day. I'm it's like, no, it's not for that. James building, James. Future. I mean, but I'm just saying, it's, even yes. though it's not for things like that, and you know, it's not for the trophies. It's just 
when I'm going, I really do want to leave a legacy. And mm -hmm. like, yes. I want, I want, you know, y'all can probably name this after me. But like, you, you just, you have to leave <laughs> yeah. a legacy because if, if, if I were to die tomorrow, God forbid, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. What the police would look at, if, if I wasn't just Keith James, they would look at my social media. Mm -hmm. And a lot of our social medias don't represent who we, we really are. are. Yeah. You know what I mean? So sure. it's on me to really create what I want to be remembered for. So I remember be remembered as the guy who wanted to be president. You know what I mean? I want to be the one who you can, I can come on the show, laugh with you guys and not be nervous. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that's what's really important. I want people to learn how to, you know, just be themselves and embrace who they are because I mean, I went through a lot of stuff, but I never regret it because I feel like we have to go through an experience in order to really find out what it means mm -hmm. to like, you know, love God and be yes. with God. For me, at least, you know what I mean? That spiritual connection is what I needed. So, I mean, and to you're accept not the first. where you are, where yes. you are. So, mm -hmm. for you and what I see, because I'm around a lot of different young people, mm -hmm. just to accept their story, yes. you don't have to do all of those things. You can just be you. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes we get into so many different things because we're afraid to just come out and be this and we have to join this in order to feel accepted or we mm -hmm. have to do this in order to mm -hmm. not seem different. But that just being different and being who you are is what's most important. I mean, yes. God created us a lot right. of different, exactly. different of us, so you can't expect us all to be the same. That's you know, it. we all are made in image and likeness of That's him, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But if we put a limit on to say that I have to be like you because that's right. normal, mm -hmm. then yeah. we're putting a limit on God saying that he's, he's you know, he's not an right. unlimited God. He can't Absolutely. make all things happen. That's right. So, right. so, I mean, that's, that's very important that we stress yeah, to our so young people. Definitely. So that one, all young people, you don't, your story doesn't have to be a struggle. Mm -hmm. You're making choices so that you don't have to have that struggle. So exactly. we're going to start you off early. <laughs> we're going to get you in wonderful things like time. Yes. <laughs> so that yes. we make good choices and everything goes. And as well, all right, I'm giving you some time off camera. Yes. Unless you have it. Are you ready? Yeah, okay. I'm ready. All right. So we've got some So it is very important. Wilmington this Saturday, uh, November 21st from 11 to 2. Um, Westside Grows is having in conjunction with, I believe, um, Prestige Academy. They are having a literacy event on the east side and they are looking for volunteers. Okay. So please get in contact with either Prestige or check out Vanity Sanders on Facebook. She has all the information. As well, After Effects, again, A-F-T-A-A, -A, Effects, A-F-E-X-X. -X. They are giving back to the communities and they are looking for families in need of donations for Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. um, and you can contact After Effects also on Facebook, Instagram, all the social media sites to nominate a family and they're gonna come up with a wonderful basket for them. So those are two great events that are taking a place and we need you to be involved. All right, so yes. that's how we make a change, right? Yes, oh, yes. yes. exactly, yes. 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 All right, so we wanna take this time to thank all of our guests who came on tonight. I know, thank you. Thank you. Sure. And we also wanna thank our lovely camera crew. Yeah, shout out to them, shout out <laughs> we to them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we want to give a special shout out to Brittany who hosted for us last week. Yay! Yay Brittany, and she did an awesome job. Also to T. Warren, thank you so much. We appreciate guest hosts always. Yes. And uh, we, I know Keith James is going to be a guest host yes. very soon. <laughs> no oh, question. All right. Thanks so much and tune in next time.